So you learn you're an Israelite. You learn that you got to keep the commandments. You got a, you got a girlfriend? You got a girl, you trying to get a girlfriend? You trying to finish school and then you're going to get a girlfriend? You going to get a girlfriend? All right, give me that Hebrews 13:4. All right, because that's another problem in our communities. Are your, your parents, are they together? They're together? Okay, I'll pray. So you had a good example. Okay, but a lot of our friends, right, and maybe our cousins and stuff, most of our, peop- most of our friends, right, they didn't grow up with both their parents, correct? Why do you think that? So they didn't love them as much as they should and they walked out? Is that the only reason why? They weren't ready. Uh huh. No sex before marriage. Okay, so what are you going to do to prevent yourself from falling down that same path? Because there's something you didn't mention. You, you actually, you didn't mention it. You said that they didn't practice not having sex before marriage. What do boyfriends and girlfriends do? They have sex before marriage. So what does God say about having sex before marriage? You think he's okay with that? That's a no-no for him. Right? So if we're going to stand up for God against the evildoers, we got to know what God stands on marriage and boyfriend and girlfriend. Read that. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Uh-huh. Marriage is honorable in all. Uh-huh. Marriage is honorable in all. No, boyfriend and girlfriend. Marriage is honorable in all. So what is honorable? Marriage is honorable. So boyfriend and girlfriend is not honorable on the side of God. Because guess what? You can lay, you can have good intentions. You might want a girlfriend, right? And you want to one day uh, marry her. But her, in her mind, she might just want you just to have sex. Just so you can pay for certain things. And when she gets tired of you and sees another man that she likes, she's going to leave you and go with another man. That's called whoredom. And it's going to explain it. Read Marriage is honorable and all, uh-huh. and the bed undefiled, uh-huh. but whoremongers. Uh-huh. So whoremongers, so people who like to have sex outside of marriage, right? Boyfriends and girlfriends outside of marriage, read. And adulterers, God will judge. So what's going to happen to boyfriend and girlfriends? They're not going to make it right. If Christ came back today and you're Mr. Boyfriend and Girlfriend, God calls out whoredom. God said he's going to judge you. But before Christ come back, can God judge you before that? He can judge you. How would he judge you? Deuteronomy 28. How can God judge you if you're in the midst of boyfriend and girlfriend? Let me ask you something. What happens when you have uh, uh, sex with someone? What can you contract from having sex with somebody? Diseases? What type of diseases? STDs. STDs, right? Are STDs written in the Bible? Is gonorrhea, syphilis, is any of that stuff written in the Bible? You would imagine so. Let's see what the Bible says. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 21. We're going to read the last scripture and we're going to wrap it up because it's raining. All right, read. The Lord shall make the pestilence. Verse 61. Also, every sickness and every, every plague which is not written in the book of this law every sickness is gonorrhea sickness is AIDS is sickness HIV syphilis uh, herpes all those are what STDs right those things are not written in the Bible they're not written in the Bible but read uh, them will the Lord bring upon thee so God will bring upon us if we break the covenant of marriage because can you get an STD if you're married no. There's only been you two, right? The only way, if, and if you guys were married, you got an STD, meaning someone stepped out of their marriage and committed adultery and fornication. That's the only other way you could get STD. But God said marriage is honorable. You, and when you get married to your wife, you wouldn't have to worry about getting STD and getting judged by God. But these are the things that we have to apply to our lives and, and apply, to, apply to our lives and teach our people to rise up, to, be, to get back on top as the Israelites. All right, Francisco, you were king on this earth. We got to keep God's laws and commandments. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. 
We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.